The Earth's magnetic field is going nuts. The world is going to end. Or maybe it's not. I'm Zach, this is Zach DTV, and today we're going to take a look at this. Well, another day, another headline saying the Earth is going to end. This one kind of got me because it's about the Earth's magnetic field is about to collapse. The Earth's magnetic North Pole is moving in ways we've never seen before. The Earth's North Pole has become all wonky and we're all dead. Well, I read these type of headlines and I just felt like, you know what, today I'm going to take a little bit of time and address this situation. So let's start out and just get this out of the way. The Earth's magnetic poles move. For the last 4 billion years that the Earth has had a magnetic shield protecting us from the sun, those poles have moved. Sometimes they move so much that they actually flip position, where the North Pole becomes the South Pole and vice versa. I mean, heck, researchers believe that the poles reverse every 300,000 years, give or take a couple years. In fact, they say it's been about 780,000 years since the last time it happened. You may be asking, though, how could they possibly know? How could they know what was going on so long before human beings were even here? And the answer is surprisingly simple. Magnetic minerals in our rocks point towards the magnetic North Pole. So picture, if you would, a volcano erupts. The magma comes out. And that magma, as it starts to cool, all the little magnetite crystals in it start aligning themselves with the lines in our magnetic field. Well, as you go back through our geological history, you start to notice that, whoa, those lines back here aren't pointing towards where North Pole is now. They're pointing over here. And they might have a different inclination, declination, and that'll let you track where the pole was when that rock was formed. You take into account a little bit of continental drift there, and you can locate where a, a general idea of where these poles used to be. And like I said, as far back as we could track, it's been in motion. So could this advanced pole movement be a sign of that coming? Well, yeah. And if it does, our poles will get pretty chaotic, like this. This is a good computer model of what they estimate it would look like. So yeah, you'd end up with a North Pole over Austin, Texas, and you'd end up with a South Pole in Russia. Who knows? But on a normal day, it looks sort of like this. It's still pretty chaotic. The position of our North Pole alone moves day by day. This is something that we have been able to document since James Ross's expedition, where he located the North Pole back in 1831. And quick side note, also, on that same trip, his ship got frozen in ice for four years, and they had to hang out on the frozen ice sheet, waiting for it to thaw out enough for them to go home. I mean, that's a real hardened adventurer right there. Now, they found the pole was moving because in 1904, a second expedition went trying to find the pole again. And when they did, they found that the pole had moved by 50 kilometers. And as you can see in this map, the pole has been moving steadily northward, this whole time. Now where it does get a little bit odd is from the time we started measuring back in 1831, the pole has been pretty steadily moving from about 8 to 15 kilometers per year. This was a normal amount until somewhere in the early 90s when all of a sudden that speed ramped up to 40 to 55 kilometers per year. And it seems to be beelining in one direction towards Siberia. During my research for this video, I have seen all sorts of theories as to why this could be happening. I have seen things like Planet X is out there pooling our magnetic pole over. Uh, there's one about how our rotation, the rotation of the solar system, the rotation of the solar system around the center of the Milky Way, the rotation of the Milky Way around the center of the universe, and all this is pooling our North Pole in an odd direction. That one's kind of silly too. I like this one though where CERN is pulling the North Pole towards it. Because, you know, all those high-powered magnets they use in the particle colliders, yep, they're pulling the Earth's magnetic pole towards France. Now, unlike the headlines that are designed to make you click, or the theories that seem to have no basis in reality, there are a group of people that have a very good theory as to why this is happening. These magnetic geophysicists have tools at their disposal that the normal person just doesn't. Things like swarms of satellites orbiting the Earth, monitoring what the magnetic field is doing. Lasers that can read the magnetic field from a ground-based station. And even 
magnetic sensors placed in the Earth itself all around the globe. And with all this data, they have been able to put together some of the best and most precise models of our Earth's magnetic field. Using these models and the data they've collected, the accepted theory is that in the Earth's outer core, there is a section of iron under Canada and under Siberia. These two sections have been playing tug of war with the pole for quite some time now. And it seems that the section under Canada is starting to lose. But even that is just a theory, even though a theory based on a lot of evidence and a lot of information. But yet we will never get down there to truly see what's going on. So it's our best guess. That's what we have. This is in the headlines right now due to a recent article published in the journal Nature because they're supposed to redo our magnetic map of the world. Generally, they do this map every five years, but the last time they did it in 2015, shortly after it was completed, there was a magnetic jerk in South America. This jerk affected our magnetic field in ways that they did not predict in the 2015 model. And people who rely on fine measurements around the poles were finding that their current model that guessed where everything should be was way out of whack and they're supposed to be taking a new measurement here in 2019 a little bit quicker than the five-year interval so that way they could update this map a little sooner it does seem however that the u.s government shutdown has shut down noaa the national oceanic and atmospheric association we're unable to update the map at this time so it gives people something to write about Another interesting thing I learned doing this research is that that magnetic snap that happened under South America in 2016 was not a one-time thing. The earliest documented snap was in 1969, and it seems to have happened about every 9 to 11 years since. They also find some, some other evidence that show these snaps happening all the way back to 1901, but that's as far back as they could track them, and even that's not for sure. But these do seem pretty common, and if you look at them throughout everything they say they know from 1901 to current, you're looking about 9 to 11 years between each event. They don't know what causes them yet, but it's still a pretty interesting little thing. I guess to wrap this up is let's watch out for sensationalist headlines. Yes, the North Pole is wandering. No, climate change isn't causing it. Aliens aren't doing it. Planet Nine's not about to punch into the side of the Earth and destroy life as we know it. Maybe CERN's pulling all the iron in the center of the Earth towards CERN. That'd be kind of funny, but I guess it's better than a black hole, right? But what it is, is we are very small beings on a very large planet that has been doing what it's going to do for billions of years, and we're just along for the ride. So while it is great that we try to stay informed on what's happening, maybe we can't explain everything, and maybe we just have to roll with the punches. Keep in mind, if this is the beginning of a pole reversal, it's not the end of the world. We will still have a magnetic shield that will protect us from the sun. Yes, it might get a little chaotic, our GPS might not work right, our compasses sure as heck wouldn't know what to do. But if you look on the bright side, we might be able to sit on a beach in Florida and watch the aurora while drinking a margarita, instead of having to do it somewhere cold. Well, with that, I am going to wrap it up. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, share it with your friends, show them this new guy you found. If you've been here for a while, I hope that you enjoy this new longer format video. I am trying to put these out once a week from now on out. Um, everything should be back to normal from here on. So we will have news videos out during the week and we will have a deeper dive, more information, bigger subject every weekend. Make sure to let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments down below. And until next time, have fun and be safe.